On day one, I spawned in as the Grim Reaper. Then I noticed I was tiny, and I only had three hearts. What is this nonsense? I looked around and saw that I was in front of a castle. Ooh, this looks interesting. I'll take a look inside. I opened the door and called out. Anybody home? Maybe one of my friends lived here or something. I started wandering around and found myself in a throne room. What is that? I saw a man with a mutant wither skeleton. He was holding a scythe. Wait, I think that's my scythe. How did you get it? The man screamed in rage and pointed at me. Destroy him. A bunch of zombies came out from the back room and I gasped in shock. Without even thinking, I fired an icy blast that froze some of the zombies solid. Huh, that's interesting. I guess this is because I'm as cold as death. I ran out the door and down the stairs as the zombies followed me. That was not what I was expecting. And why does that guy have an army of zombies? That's not right. I found a small cave and decided to sleep there for the night. Tomorrow, I'll find out what's going on. On day two, I left the cave to go exploring. I walked for half a day until I found my way to the Atum Forest. I don't really have a home, so I guess I'm gonna have to make one. I started collecting some wood to make a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. After some additional mining and crafting, I had some simple stone tools and weapons. Well, it's better than nothing. I had been working so hard all day, so when I stopped, I realized I was hungry. What does a Grim Reaper eat? I found some cows and pigs and cooked up some food for myself. It didn't do anything to help. In fact, it made me feel sick. Gross, I need to find something else. I noticed that it had gotten dark. Suddenly, a group of zombies popped out and started attacking me. With my new stone sword, I was able to take them out easily. They had dropped some meat and I stared at it hungrily. Maybe this will help me? I ate the meat and sure enough, my hearts were restored. I feel much better now. I made it back to my base and worked on a few more things before heading to bed. On day three, I went back out to find more materials for the base. It was safe enough, but I wanted to make some improvements. It turned out to be a nice day. I hope nothing too crazy happens today. I realized I had spoken too soon because just then I heard an awful crash. I ran to see what the noise was when I saw a dread queen fighting a bunch of zombies. Hey, leave her be! I rushed forward with my weapons. The zombies started to attack me when I remembered my trick at the castle. I fired out some ice blasts and froze up some of those nasty zombies. The others noticed and started to run away. Nice job, Death. It's been a minute since I've seen you. Did you shrink? Who are you? I'm Famine. Do you know me? Uh, I'm sorry, no. Oh, this must have been Lord Terror's doing. I knew he was up to no good. I was so confused at this point. Famine could see that I was overwhelmed. You are the Grim Reaper, or Death. I'm Famine, and we have two friends, War and Pestilence. We establish order in the world. But Lord Terror, as he calls himself, started messing with stuff. He's been infiltrating the villages and turning people into undead. That's horrible. Those souls need to be freed and move on. I thought that's what you were planning, but nobody has seen you for a while. Now I know something bad happened. You're smaller and you don't look like yourself. This is a lot to take in. How about we get back to my base? It's not a castle, but it's safer than out here. Sure. Famine and I made our way back to my base, just in time for the sun to set. On days four to five, I helped Famine make a little home at my base. I was driven out of my home by the undead. I guess Lord Terror is getting more powerful as the days go on. The house wasn't too fancy, but Famine seemed to like it, and she thanked me. No problem, anything for a friend. I went out to look for some more supplies when I saw a group of skeletons near a cave entrance. I'm death, surely they won't want to harm me. As I approached, they seemed friendly, but then they started shooting me with their bows. Hey, we aren't enemies. Honestly, I didn't know anymore. I was just a baby after all. I used my sword to attack and soon enough, they were all gone. Hey, what's that? I noticed a bow on the ground and I picked it up. It had an enchantment of flame on it. Nice, this will come in handy. On day six to eight, while out in the forest near my base, I gathered some meat from some more cows and pigs. Famine got hungry a lot after all. I'm gonna keep working and getting stronger. Lord Terror doesn't stand a chance against me. Is that so? I looked, and to my surprise, it was Lord Terror. He had a few zombies around him. Let those innocent souls go. You don't have a right to keep them here. 
Lord Terror laughed and swung the scythe around. I'm the Lord of Death now, Little Reaper. I won your scythe fair and square. What are you talking about? He seemed tired of talking, so he swung at me instead. Whoa! He was fast. I tried to dodge him, but he kept getting hits in. I beat you once. I will beat you again. I gotta get out of here. I ran as fast as my little legs could carry me. As I did, I heard Lord Terror laughing from behind me. That's right, little reaper. Run away. I will see you soon enough. On days 9 to 10, I made it back to the base. Famine could tell I was hurt, and she tried her hardest to help me. It's okay, Death. You will grow stronger and eventually beat Lord Terror. He's just a silly little monster trying to steal other people's things. I felt a little bit better after our talk, but I still felt exhausted. Oh, I almost forgot. I have a surprise for you. She brought me outside to show me a statue she was beginning to make. Ta-da! It's great, Famine! Is it a tent? No, silly. Do you really not know what it is? I looked again. Can you tell what it is? I also made some other upgrades while you were gone. She showed me the lanterns and a small archery range. Wow, you've really outdone yourself. It's the least I can do for a friend. Famine was awesome. I was glad I was able to find her. I hoped our other friends were doing okay. I would go looking for them soon. On days 11 to 12, I had a vivid dream. I was a fully grown Grim Reaper with my scythe at my side. I was living in the castle that I had escaped from on day one. Everything is as it should be. Not quite. I looked and saw Lord Terror, except he looked like a normal villager. I believe we have a game that needs playing death. With his dark powers, Lord Terror began to steal away my energy and my ability. He shapeshifted into his mutant wither skeleton self as I became a sad little baby reaper. Ah! I woke up in horror at the nightmare I had just had. I rushed to Famine to tell her about it. She shook her head. So that's what happened. I knew you made a deal with a dying human, but I didn't know you lost all your power in the process. That can't be it. Why am I back, but as a baby? Why can he control the dead? Famine shook her head. Maybe our friends know. I think it's about time we go find them. On days 13 to 15, I went out to explore. I was hoping to find war or pestilence, but they didn't seem to be anywhere. I hope they weren't captured or anything. I realized I was back in the area where I had seen Famine for the first time. There were a bunch of zombies milling around still. I guess they just expected her to come back. Get lost! I drew my bow and defeated them one by one. I didn't realize it until now, but I was releasing their souls from their bodies. I was freeing them. Nice. I managed to release all their souls when I felt a power coursing through me. I grew in size and became an older Grim Reaper. I'm bigger and I have 30 hearts. I realized I could also now turn invisible for short periods. That'll come in handy. I can't wait to try this out later. On days 16 to 19, I found a cave and decided to mine for some more materials. This looks promising. Hopefully I can find some iron in here. As I was venturing deeper into the cave, I saw a group of skeletons standing right on top of an iron deposit. It looks like I'm gonna have to take care of that. I drew my bow. They noticed me immediately and began shooting. Come on guys, I just need some iron. After just a few more shots, they were all gone. Their bows and arrows scattered around me. I mined the iron without any more trouble and got to work. I smelted the iron into ingots with a furnace, then was able to make a new sword, pickaxe, and some other tools. Yes, things are looking up. On days 20 to 22, I started to head back to my base when I noticed I was being followed. I went invisible briefly and waited for them to approach. Then as the figure approached, I turned visible again and jumped out. Whoa, 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 I'm a friend. He was a crimson wizard, and the red of his outfit made me think of anger, which then made me think, are you war? In the flesh. Yeah, I thought you looked kind of different. You're uh, not as tall as you used to be. I told him what happened, and he whistled. That sounds awful. Hopefully you can get your scythe and your castle back. Those are pretty sick. Thanks? No problem. I invited him back to my base, and he happily agreed. And I thought my house was a fortress, you know, being war and all. But those pesky undead got inside and started breaking everything. So I left. Good thing I ran into you. We were nearly to the base when we saw Famine running toward us. Oh, hey, Famine! She didn't even acknowledge war. 
Death! Lord Terror is outside! He is threatening to take down the base! Wait, what? Sheesh, it's like I'm invisible. Stay here. I'll go see what he wants. If I need help, I'll call for you. War and famine got to catching up while I approached the entrance. Sure enough, Lord Terror was there with my scythe. I believe that scythe belongs to me. See now, little reaper. I won this fair and square. You agreed to the terms. I don't even remember what happened. And you're just a human. You can't be death. That's my calling. You're wrong. The witch gave me the ability to win this power. Witch? Lord Terror screamed and charged at me. I dodged him and used my Ice Blast ability to try to stop him. It didn't work for some reason. What in the world? He laughed and lunged at me again. I slashed him with my new iron sword. I actually managed to hit him and he looked at me in shock. I was about to hit him again when he slammed a scythe into the ground, pushing me back. I'll be back to finish you off. And with that, Lord Terror ran away. What a coward. I'll say. I looked and saw War and Famine looking out from behind the trees. I did manage to wound him though, so that means I'm getting stronger. Yeah, but you have a lot of work to do. On days 23 to 26, I chatted with War about Lord Terror. You definitely need some upgrades if you're gonna fight Lord Terror and beat him. I can think of a few things that might be useful to you. Like what? Well, you definitely need to upgrade your sword. Iron is all right, but you need some diamonds and an enchanting table to improve your attack. Okay, where should I go? War told me all the places where I would find the supplies. It wasn't a short list. This might take a while. You want to defeat Lord Terror and get your scythe back, right? Of course I do. Then get to it. I started gathering materials for the enchanting table and managed to make one all by myself. Good job, Jeff. Thanks. If you think I'm doing a good job, be sure to join me on all my other adventures. Just search Z-O, Z-O. On days 27 to 31, I went to check on Famine. I hadn't seen her while I was gathering supplies, and I wanted to make sure she was okay. Hey, Famine, how are you liking your house? It's great. Look what I've been working on. She led me to the statue, which I could definitely tell was an hourglass. You've made some great progress. Yeah, well, I'm not quite there yet. I wanted to add something special on top. It's a surprise. Could you get some white and black wool for me? Sure. I made my way outside to find some sheep to bring back to the base. I found an abandoned village and spotted some sheep in pens. Perfect. As I went to collect them, I heard something approaching. A horde of zombies were coming toward me. They must have been the villagers that used to live here. You guys need to rest. And I'm so sorry Lord Terror is doing this to you. I used my weapons to release the souls from the undead. I was much more powerful and helped them all in just a few moments. Hopefully, you can all be at peace now. I gathered the sheep and managed to bring them all back to the base. It wasn't easy, but I knew that famine would appreciate it. On days 32 to 35, I went to gather some more food for all of us. Pork seemed like a pretty safe bet. I know the pigs will be easy to find, but I need to wait until dark for the zombies. I decided to set up a little trap for them, and sure enough, they fell right into it. Impressive, Death. Who is that? You don't recognize my voice? Shame on you, old friend. Then I saw someone step out from behind the mushrooms. Of course I didn't notice her. She was a mushroom lord. She blended in. Pestilence. Did you shrink? Yeah, I shrunk. I told Pestilence what had happened, and she tissed in disapproval. Now, why would you do that, Death? You are too clever to be outsmarted and depowered by some lowly wither skeleton. That's the thing. I think Lord Terror cheated me. He mentioned something about a witch. I think that he somehow won because of her. Well, the only witch I know of is Famine. Hey. I'm just kidding. I've heard of an apothecary that lives here in the swamp. Maybe that's who he went to. This is great information. Pestilence agreed to take the food back to the base while I looked for the witch. Hopefully, she could give me more information about Lord Terror. On days 36 to 39, I journeyed further into the fungal patch in search of the witch. I thought for sure that I would find her, but I didn't see a house anywhere. Where in the world is she? I looked around some more when I saw a group of rabbits. They were acting kind of strange, a little too organized. Maybe they're her henchmen or something. I should follow them. Hmm. Actually, they're probably just stocking up on food. How silly of me to think that they were working for the witch. Then, I noticed that the rabbits all gathered together again. They seemed to be examining each other's food. Okay, I should maybe look somewhere else. 
Then the rabbits all bounded toward a large mushroom and disappeared. Whoa, where did they go? I quickly followed after them, running straight toward the mushroom. On days 40 to 43, I ran through the fungal patch chasing the rabbits. What in the world? Intruder! A large group of rabbits came bounding toward me. What are you doing in Our Lady's realm? Did you have an inquiry? Is this where the witch lives? The rabbits gasped. You dare call her such a rude name. She is an apothecary of great renown. Sorry, I just need answers. I don't mean her any harm. You look like you do. Then the rabbits started jumping at me. Hey! I didn't want to hurt them, so I just tried to swat them away as nicely as I could. Death? What are you doing here? I looked up to see a friendly witch. Friends, no need to harass Death. I I'm sure he has a reason for being here. The rabbit stopped attacking me and quickly surrounded the woman. Who are you? I'm Amelia. I wasn't expecting you for quite some time. I I'm not here to collect your soul. I just need to know why you helped Lord Terror. Lord Terror? He stole my power and made me regenerate. He took my scythe and is using it to keep souls captive in their undead bodies. Amelia gasped and started to shake her head. <gasps> that was Logan Turner. I gave him a potion of luck. He said he needed it in order to fulfill his last dream before he passed. I had no idea he would use it for such an awful thing. She seemed genuinely upset. I can't undo what's been done, but maybe this can help you. She went inside her house and came out with a potion. What is this? A potion of strength. You will need that in order to get your scythe back. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again, but hopefully not for a long time. She waved goodbye as I left her realm, returning to the swamp. On days 44 to 49, I returned to my base. Pestilence, famine, and war were having a good time together. I noticed they had improved their homes as well as the wall of the base. You've been busy. So have you, my friend. Did you find the witch? Apothecary, and yes, she was very nice. I told them the whole story and showed them the potion. That'll be useful later. I'm glad you were able to find her. Probably gave her quite a scare though. Just a little bit. We all laughed and chatted for a little bit before Famine jumped up. Oh, come look at the statue. I went to look and sure enough, Famine had outdone herself. On top of the hourglass was a skull that looked just like my face. Whoa, it's amazing. You've been a great friend to us, Death. It's the least we can do. We admired the statue together for a little while longer and then went to bed. On days 50 to 53, I woke up to a loud crash. I hurried outside to see what it was and there were zombies everywhere. I could see Lord Terror standing on the edge of the wall. Come and fight me yourself, Logan. Don't call me that. He snarled at me and then swung the scythe. It nearly knocked me over, but it also knocked out some of the undead. Time to be freed, my friends. I used my iron sword on the group of undead, freeing them from their cursed bodies. It took a little while, but I eventually got them all. You can all be at peace now. Just then, I felt a pain in my back. I grew taller and gained more hearts. I looked at my back to see what the pain was and realized that I had grown dark feathery wings. Whoa, this is amazing. I flew up for a minute to survey the damage. This is gonna take some time to fix. Death. I looked and saw famine and pestilence running toward me. I lowered myself to the ground. What's wrong? Lord Terra took war. The undead were just a distraction. No! I slumped to the ground. I thought I could protect everyone, but Lord Terror was too clever. He needed to pay. On days 54 to 57, we all worked hard to fix the base. We gathered supplies, made the walls taller, and added extra security measures, including a small moat. After working all day, we sat down to chat about our next move. There's no doubt that Lord Terra took war to the castle. Why do you say that? Oh yeah, you don't remember. There's a massive dungeon in the basement. It has cages, traps, and all sorts of things. We actually used it to meet there sometimes for brunch. Sounds lovely. It was. We should do it again soon. Damon cleared her throat. <clears throat> Sorry, but he'll be there for sure. There is a back entrance where we would come in. Quicker that way. Pestilence gave me directions, and I wrote them down. I needed to find our friend before Lord Terror did something awful. But first, I needed to prepare. On days 58 to 62, I went mining for more diamonds. I needed to make some better armor and weapons for myself, since I had no idea what I might face at the castle. I 
and wasn't having any luck, and was about to go search another cave, when I saw a glimmer just up ahead. Diamonds! I walked forward, then felt something fall on me from above. It was a huge hairy spider, and he had brought some friends. I'm a friend, no need to hurt me. The spiders kept attacking, and I had no choice but to defend myself. Soon enough, they were all gone. Now, on to the diamonds. The deposit was actually really large, and I managed to make armor, plus a new sword and a pickaxe. Sweet! I felt just a little bit more ready to go save war. On day 63 to 66, I noticed that part of the statue had been damaged during the fight. I didn't want to finish it without war, so I just admired it, with all its burns and marks. I'll save you, war. I promise. Hello, Mr. Death, sir! I looked and saw some of Amelia's rabbit friends gathering around me. You aren't going to jump on me again, are you? No, sir. We need your help. Amelia has been captured by that Lord Terror Man. We don't have the strength to get her back. Did you get her back? The rabbits looked very concerned. Of course, he has my friend too. He's probably keeping them in the same place. Oh, thank you, Mr. Death, sir. I'll be back soon. In the meantime, you can wait here with my friends. They can help you. They agreed to stay while I rescued Amelia. This was going to be a little bit more difficult, but I was determined. And hey, if you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to subscribe. We love having you here with us. On days 67 to 70, I followed the directions to the back door entrance of the dungeon. It was hiding behind some trees and bushes. Good job me for thinking ahead. I entered quietly and made my way down, down, down. I didn't hear much for a while, so I thought I was in the clear. What was that? I turned a corner and saw a swarm of zombies blocking the hallway. They saw me and started ambling toward me. Get back! I used my wings to fly over them. I fired my ice blast at them from the air, freezing them solid. Peace, friends. I lowered myself in front of a door and opened it carefully. Death! It's about time you showed up. War and Amelia were stuck in cages, and I quickly broke the bars to free them. How did you know I was here? Your loyal little friends told me. They really are the best, aren't they? Sure are. Let's get out of here. On day 71 to 74, we made our way back up toward the back door. Then I noticed a lever I hadn't seen before. It was hiding behind a pillar. I wonder what this opens. Is that a wise idea? It was my house. I'm sure it'll be fine. I released the lever and a trap door opened. I went inside and saw a chest in a small room. <gasps> There's a chest. Well, what are you waiting for? Open it. I opened it, and inside were netherite ingots, gold, diamonds, and some other ingredients for enchanting. Wow! I climbed back up and showed war. Hey, you can finally make that sword we've been talking about. Right! We continued out, following the stream of daylight. On days 75 to 78, we finally made it out. Thank goodness. I was beginning to think that Lord Terror would hold us there forever. Not so fast. Lord Terror came around the corner, scythe in hand. You dare take my witch and my strongest soldier? I am not a witch. Then I would never fight for you. We brandished our weapons as Lord Terror snarled. Why won't you just die? He swung the scythe, but I managed to dodge. I then swung my sword and hit Lord Terror. He stepped back, then swung again. He was fast, but I was an equal opponent now. I could sense his fear. No, 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 no! He slammed the hilt of the scythe into the ground and blasted us back. Somehow, through some dark magic, he stole my potion of strength and drank it. On day 79 to 84, we all watched in horror as Lord Terror grew and grew and grew. He was enormous! Oh no! We need to go! Lord Terror laughed as I picked up my friends and flew away with them. This has to end soon, or Lord Terror is going to take over everything. On days 85 to 89, we arrived safely back at my base. Famine and Pestilence came running out to greet us. Okay, you better not cry, because I'm not good at dealing with emotion. Amelia saw her rabbits, and they all jumped for joy. It seemed like things were at least a little normal for now. Death, come, we need to fix that sword of yours. War took me to upgrade my sword and then showed me how to enchant it. Wow, this will really help, War. Thanks for everything you've done. Hey, I love conflict, but not when it involves my friends. It's the fire aspect enchantment. It'll give your sword a burning edge. 
This will help you to get your scythe back. How? Lord Terror doesn't always have the scythe with him. He likes to hang it up in the main corridor and just admire it. I heard him talking about it while we were captured. This is great information war! If you can fight him off long enough to get the scythe back, that'll be the key to stopping Lord Terror for good. I agreed and went to show my friends. They ooed and awed before Famine spoke up. Come and see what Pestilence and I did with the help of the rabbits. They took me over to the statue, which now had wildflowers growing all around the base. On top was the skull, now with flowers and a touch of flames. Guys, this looks awesome! You are the Lord of Death, but we know you have a soft side. I do like flowers. I stared at it in awe. I really did have amazing friends. On days 90 to 94, I traveled back to the castle to retrieve my scythe. If I did it while Lord Terror was unaware, surely I would be able to defeat him. As I approached the castle, I decided to just hide next to one of the pillars inside the throne room and stake it out. I could see Lord Terror back to his normal size. Thank goodness, he was standing around, admiring the scythe. That's mine. I waited for a long time before he fell asleep. I quietly opened the door and snuck past him, grabbing the scythe from the wall. I expected to grow into my full form, but something was wrong. Intruder! Lord Terror started to charge at me. I brandished my new sword and smacked him backwards. He brought out another potion and drank it before charging at me. He was incredibly fast and I could barely see him as he struck me. Oh no! My hearts were fading fast since I couldn't defend myself. I ran away, taking the scythe with me. It won't work for you, little reaper. You are too late. I didn't know what he meant, but I flew away before he had a chance to attack me again. I need to fix whatever he did to my scythe, otherwise I'm dead meat. On days 95 to 97, I brought my scythe back to the base and had War examine it. I don't know what to tell you, it looks normal to me. Maybe Amelia will know. I took it to her and she examined it. This is my fault, Lord Terror forced me to make a binding spell. He is now bound to the scythe by an enchantment. How do I break it? I'll have to make a counter spell, but it will probably take a few days. It might even break it. Do it. She worked tirelessly trying to fix the scythe, and I did what I could to assist her. I really need this to work. On day 98, I helped Amelia with what I could, but she said I needed to wait for the result. I made my way outside and admired our base and the statue. It had been a difficult journey so far, but I was glad that I had found my friends, made some new ones, and grown stronger. Even if my scythe didn't work, I knew that I would defeat Lord Terror somehow. Hey, we're really glad that you've been here on this journey too. Be sure to subscribe and search for ZOZO for more videos. Also, comment below on what my next adventure should be. I can't wait to see what you say. On day 99, I went to look for Amelia. She looked a little discouraged. I don't know if the spell worked. You'll need to wield it in battle to see. Well, then I guess it's time to go fight Lord Terror. I'm sorry about all the trouble I've caused. If it wasn't for me, none of this would have happened. Maybe, but I'm glad it did. I got to find my old friends again, build an awesome base, and meet you. You're an awesome apothecary, Amelia. Which? But who's keeping track? Go give him, well, you know. I smiled as I flew off towards the castle, scythe in hand. As I landed on the steps, the door was open for me. The undead were nowhere to be seen, but Lord Terror stood on the steps, sword in hand, potion in the other. You can't defeat me. We'll see about that. I took my scythe and slammed the hilt into the ground, causing everything to shake. I felt a surge of power and I was connected to my weapon again. I grew taller, my hearts increased, and my wings spanned further. You have cheated death, Logan Turner, and for that, you must pay. Lord Terror drank a potion and he grew taller. As our weapons met, there was a brilliant burst of light. It's not fair. I am Lord Terror, the new Grim Reaper. I earned that title. I lifted myself into the air, letting the scythe swing down with a mighty force. You stole that title. I am the rightful Grim Reaper, and now you must move on. Lord Terror screamed before the scythe made contact, and in a burst of smoke, he was gone. On day 100, I flew back to the base triumphant and glorious in my final form. Everyone cheered as I descended, and they even tried to hug me. You're our hero! The world is finally right again! And that was the honest truth.